guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the new 2021 Lexus RX 350, courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so, wanted to check this one out today because, of course, it is a Lexus that does have above average reliability according to Consumer Reports, which is a heck of a start. Lots of new standard safety as well for the 2021 RX. So, I'll get more into that later in the video, of course. And so, in this video, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking the steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, rear leg room, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different configurations you can go with for the RX350. First one being the base setup, starting at $45,170, RX350 all wheel drive for $46,570. Then there is the F Sport for $48,650, F Sport all wheel drive for $50,050, Blackline Special Edition for $49,335, and Blackline Special Edition all wheel drive for $50,735. But regardless of trim level, that you go with the power plant on the rx is going to be the same powering this beast is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 295 horsepower at 6300 rpm 268 pound feet of torque coming in at 4700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will of course be testing out in a little bit here. Zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 7.3 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 20 in the city, 27 highway for the front wheel drive, 19 in the city, then 26 on the highway for the all wheel drive. But so then before we do any kind of paddle shifter or acceleration test in the RX350 here, I did want to mention, the drive modes. Drive mode selector is going to be located directly behind the cup holders. They will include normal, eco, sport, and sport plus, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity as well. And so, having now rambled all of that off to you guys, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway and Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first. Did want to mention if you push the shifter all the way to the back and to the left, that is going to give you that full manual shift mode, allowing me full control over the shifting. So therefore, that is what we are going to do. Let's find a straightaway. Let's see how quickly these paddle shifters will react for us here. All right, in three, two, one, go. Whoa. Oh, holy cow. All right, paddle shifters, there is a delay to them without a doubt. Didn't expect them to be quick reacting quite honestly this is a luxury suv after all but wow that acceleration that took me by surprise this is the nav6 i most definitely didn't expect that i mean nav6s can be quick but this was dang quick definitely not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway i guess that kind of counts as our acceleration test as well because that was fun that acceleration was fun paddle shifters not really but the acceleration that was nice I like it. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.3 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, comes in at 123 feet, which is plenty respectable for the RX. As far as braking feel goes, no issues there. It's not spongy or squishy or any, anything like that. So no issues with the braking feel on this thing. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension in the back independent double wishbone type rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars did want to mention though in addition to that if you were to go with the f sport trim level you will also get tuned front and rear performance dampers as well as my very favorite adaptive variable suspension why is that one my very favorite because it gives you the very best of both worlds let me tell you why it actually monitors each shock absorber individually adjusting to the road imperfections giving you that very smoothest ride possible but it also tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering giving you better handling then as well so whenever there is an option for that adaptive variable suspension no matter what manufacturer it is I always like to recommend that one because you really can tell the difference, at least I can really tell the difference, night and day at this point between if you were to get the variable suspension versus if you were to not get it. So it is a big difference in my personal opinion. But in the end, the ride quality on this particular RX that we have today is amazing. I don't know if it's because I've been testing non-luxury SUVs lately, but the ride quality on this RX is brilliant. 
Well done, Lexus, as expected, I guess. But also, cabin noise. That's another thing I immediately noticed. The only thing I'm really getting as far as cabin noise goes is the birds chirping, which isn't a bad thing to me. I don't know, I got bird food in my backyard. It's really not a bad thing. So cabin noise is wonderful. The RX is definitely isolated. You don't hear a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin. You guys could probably tell I am driving right now and there isn't a whole lot of noise coming in. So that's definitely a good thing. As far as steering feel goes, you can adjust it based on the driving modes that you put it in. So if you prefer a heavier feel to the steering, just put it in that sport mode. And if you don't, take it out of the sport mode. You can get a looser feel to it. So really gives you the best of both worlds. I guess you could say yet again, and as far as visibility goes, I can see perfect. It really is quite good when it comes to visibility on the RX, so no issues there whatsoever. But in addition to that, you also get rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard on every single trim level. Essentially what that is, is whenever the RX detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. It's kind of like automatic headlights. It's just one less thing you have to worry about. So that's definitely a big plus as well. And in addition to that, if you wanted a head up display for even better visibility, that goes for six hundred dollars that is optional but that's going to project your speed and speed limit up onto your windshield as well as some safety features as well better helping you keep your eyes on the road so again assisting with visibility there too but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2021 Lexus RX 350. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Lexus RX 350, finished in eminent white pearl, which is a $425 paint option, by the way, in case anybody was curious. It is a pretty cool paint color, especially when you get up close, but let's go ahead and start up front on this one. First, I wanted to mention a little bit on the F Sport side of things, although we don't have it. There is an S Sport specific front fascia if you were to go with that trim. Also, F Sport specific front grille then as well, but LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. It does come with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you then there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard, but did want to mention an optional headlight configuration called triple beam LED headlights. That goes for $1,675. That not only gives you auto leveling, but adaptive front lighting system as well. I love that because what that is, is when you're going around the bend at night, those headlights are therefore going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a squirrel or a bird or whatever so that's definitely a little safety feature in itself i suppose you could say just to the bottom silver aluminum accenting on that front lip that is going to come with all trim levels and to the sides you guys could probably see it there are some front air curtains there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination as well for a little better aerodynamics but nonetheless let's go ahead and make our way now to the side of the RX. All right, so now since we are around to the side of the RX, first thing I wanted to mention, starting up top, those aluminum roof rails, they are an optional. They are with an optional package with the power moonroof. We do have that package today because otherwise, roof rails actually do not come standard on the RX, but you can get them like we have here today. But floating roof line, also love that design towards the back. You guys can see that. Rear privacy glass, of course, coming standard on the RX as well. Taking a look at the side mirrors, there are power folding, auto dimming side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integration turret signals as well and if you were to go with the F Sport trim level, they will be gloss black. They will be finished in gloss black, I should say. So a little differentiation there. Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch double five spoke alloys are going to be the standard configuration for the RX. However, if you were to jump up to the F Sport, that will jump up that wheel size as well to 20 inch 10 spoke alloys. So again, a little different configuration there. And actually, I think I like the side profile to the RX the very best. Definitely a good looking side profile to this one. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back. So now since we are around back of this one, body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there, rear spoiler with an integrated brake light as well. Just below that, LED tail lights do come standard across the board. Absolutely love that. Also should mention rear window wiper also coming standard, but I will say one thing the RX does a little bit differently than most other SUVs out there, they don't actually put the rear window wiper on the glass itself because of course that is going to impede visibility. What they actually do is tuck it up under the rear spoiler. I don't know if you guys can see that or not but it is up under there so when you turn it on it actually comes down and swipes from left to right from the top rather than the bottom so a little different configuration there i like it better again because it doesn't impede rear visibility so that's a good thing of course you got the rx 350 badging on the back as well and f sport badging if you go with the f sport trim level of course just below it all then dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here 
is that exhaust clip. you guys so now since we are around back of the rx when it comes to opening that rear lift gate it is a power lift gate that does come standard you can actually get a kick sensor or hands-free power lift gate that is a 150 dollar option if you wanted to go that route we do actually have that option here today so that is pretty cool but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 38.4 cubic feet if that was not enough space, those rear seats do, of course, fold down, bumping that up to 58.5 cubic feet. Then that is a 40-20-40 split, in case anybody was curious about that. There is no in-floor storage. However, if you lift up underneath of that cargo area, there is a full-size spare tire as opposed to the fix-a-flat. So in case anybody was curious there, and that is a good thing. 12-volt power outlet coming standard in that cargo area as well. There are a couple grocery bag hooks down there, tie-down anchors as well. There is a 12-volt power outlet as well and a rear cargo cover then too and i don't want to forget the first aid kit lexus always does that they put a first aid kit in the cargo area i always find it pretty cool because i don't find that on any other manufacturer so i don't know it's pretty cool then making our way up to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 38 inches even so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there heated second row seats are going to be optional if you wanted to go that route there is a rear center armrest with cup holders you simply press a button and that'll open up for you then rear ventilation does come standard you have dual usb charging ports back there as well that is the big win for me and if you wanted to go with rear window sunshades although we don't have them today they are optional so you can get them for the rx350 if you wanted to go that route as well so rear seats are plenty fine there but then making our way up to the front seats of the rx power adjustable driver and passenger seats do come standard new lux seating material is going to be the standard configuration however perforated leather finishes are going to be optional heated and ventilated front seats again optional for 640 dollars we do have those today heated front seats by itself is going to be a 440 dollar option you do get much enhanced bolstering with the f sport seats and let me emphasize this a little bit i literally mentioned this i feel like in all of my reviews out of all of the seats out of all the 500 plus cars that i've experienced at this point f sport seats are still my favorite they are the most comfortable seats out there without a doubt if you have a bad back you don't need to look any further than lexus f sport seats they are the best we don't have them today these seats are plenty comfortable but the F Sport seats are better. They are the very best seats out there. But anyways, then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped and you can get a heated steering wheel. That is a $150 option. We do have that again. When it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Lexus logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch and the panic button, of course, but it is essentially all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so once started up tachometer is on your left speedometer on your right there is a small digital display front and center which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side of the steering wheel giving you things like your average miles per gallon at any given time there is going to be a compass you have some radio information safety information the list goes on so basically everything you could possibly want up on the digital portion at least of those gauges and taking a look at overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to be optional again it comes with the aluminum roof rails like i was mentioning for one thousand three hundred fifty dollars dual zone climate control comes standard auto dimming rear view mirror also standard wireless phone charger adds two hundred dollars if you wanted to go that route also wanted to mention there are several different options if you guys go to lexus website you'll see that you can configure this in so many different ways there's so many different interior color options there's different trims and finishes there's walnut trim there's sepal wood trim i probably didn't say that right but we have one or the other here today so we got some kind of wood trim it looks good but perhaps my very favorite part and maybe this is going to sound a little bit weird to you guys but the headliner 
The headliner is so soft. It's so ridiculously soft. I absolutely love it. It doesn't feel like a suede headliner, but it feels like a super soft headliner. It's light years better than most everything else that I test. I don't know why I'm so particular about headliners these days, but it's very nice. I will say that. Also, of course, just in front of the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake, dual USB charging ports, 12 volt power outlet, another little slot to put your smartphone if you wanted to. There are also dual cup holders and perhaps my favorite favorite part about those dual cup holders is when you press down the one side of the cup holder you can do that for super tall drinks and if you have a super short drink you can actually push the push button in between the cup holders and that cup holder is going to raise back up for shorter drinks so I do like how Lexus thought about the tall drinks out there so that is pretty funny that's pretty cool well thought out Lexus overall of course you guys know it's a Lexus I like the throwback analog clock up front here so all in all, it's pretty darn good interior quality as expected. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because there's a couple different setups here. There is an 8-inch color touchscreen display that comes standard, but then there is the 12.3-inch color touchscreen display that is optional that we actually have today. But I will say, either way, you still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, which is a big one, meaning if you have a smartphone, just hook it up to the RX, and you have free navigation displayed up on that screen, even if you don't get the factory navigation. So... That is pretty cool, of course. A factory navigation, by the way, goes for $2,285, which you don't really need these days because if you have a smartphone, you have data, then you get it for free. So, you can also check out your weather information up there. There's some driving statistics, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, your climate control information, and of course, your radio information then as well. And by the way, when it comes to these sound systems, there are a couple different options you have to choose from. There is the nine speaker sound system, which comes standard, which is the one we have today. And then there is the 15 speaker, Mark Levinson sound system, which goes for $3,365. That comes with 835 watts. That's pretty ridiculous. And I've tested that sound system. It's pretty darn good, but we don't have that one today. We actually have the nine speaker. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Actually, not that bad. I kind of like it. Not the Mark Levinson good, but definitely a very good sound system for the RX without a doubt. More than what you would need for an RX, basically. But so anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the RX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard. It doesn't take up the full screen though, which is kind of a bummer, but still it is there. And there is a panoramic view monitor, which goes for $1,365, which gives you an additional bird's eye view if you wanted to go that route as well. But as always that, is going to lead us into safety. And so IIHS top safety pick, first thing I wanted to mention when it comes to this one, that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. There is a driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but the new standard safety for the 2021 RX, this is the big change for 2021 basically, Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert now comes standard and power folding auto dimming side mirrors now also comes standard on the RX350. But that's the new stuff. Also standard across the board is going to be a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane tracing assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, road sign assist, dynamic radar cruise control, which is always a good one, automatic high beams as well. I love that feature, by the way, you guys. I use that every single morning. You essentially just hit the button and it turns on your high beams when there's a car coming in the opposite direction then. It puts it back to regular low beams and then it puts it back to high beams once that vehicle is gone. It's super convenient, let me tell you. But in addition to that, there is also an intuitive parking assist with rear cross traffic braking option that goes for $565 if you wanted to go that route. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the RX350, the new standard safety is great. I definitely will say that safety all around really is great for this one. It's an IIHS top safety pack after all. Great reliability, of course, this is a Lexus. Great ride quality. When it comes to cabin noise, that is great as well. I keep using that word, I don't know why, but most comfy seats in existence as well. If you were to go with that F-Sport trim level, as far as constructive criticism goes, there is a lot of optional stuff on the RX, especially at this price range that should be coming standard. Like for instance, Heated seats, you can get heated seats on most Toyotas without having to opt for any options. So that is kind of interesting. Also a power moonroof. A lot of trim levels of the Corolla will give you a standard power moonroof. I'm thinking it probably should be standard on the RX then as well. So 
I would have liked to have seen some more standard stuff on the RX. And in addition to that, there is quite a bit of competition in this particular segment as well. When you include the Porsche Macan, BMW X3, and Genesis GV80, which is kind of a little bit bigger than this. So I don't know if it's really the same competition, but still quite a bit of competition, similar price ranges for all of those. So overall, in the end, the RX is really great at what matters the most. I would put it that way. So reliability, safety, and seat comfort. Those are probably the top three most important things to me. So although I would have liked to have seen a full digital gauge cluster in this one, I will say that as well. But anyways, that is about it for this one. Let me know what you guys think of the RX 350 in the comments section below, because I do read them all. It's pretty interesting. I like the conversation. Also, feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen so you can see what's coming next on the channel before it actually hits YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do every single year, all day long. And that is about it for this one. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.